Hi friends, welcome to Pathan series. In this video, we're going to talk about how to insert a pandas data frame into an Oracle database using CX Oracle Python module. I have already created a blog post and a video on using CX Oracle Python module for Oracle database interfacing. And in this blog post, I have already covered how to install CX Oracle Python module, how to connect to database, how to insert rows into the database, how to fetch rows from the database, how to update rows from the database, and how to delete rows from the database. But then I got a comment from one of our viewers requesting to explain how to insert a whole data frame into Oracle database using CX Oracle. You know, it's really simple. You just convert the data frame into a list of tuples and insert the tuples. But I thought since it's a common use case, it's worth demonstrating insertion of data frame into a database using CX Oracle. So this is the motivation for this video. So what I did was in this existing blog post demonstrating CX Oracle under the insert rows example, I have created a new section called insert data frame example. In this example, we will take an Excel file, create a data frame out of it and insert the data frame into the Oracle database, which we have installed in our local computer. So the setup for this example is I have an Excel file in a folder. The Excel file can be downloaded from this link I've given in the blog post. So you can download this Excel file from here. I'll just open this Excel file and show you the data. You have student name, date of birth and student ID. And you have two rows in this Excel file. We will read this Excel file as a data frame and insert these two rows from this data frame into the database. So the database is installed locally in my computer using Oracle Express Edition database installation. It's a free Oracle database installation. And if you don't know how to use Oracle Express Edition, I've already created a video on it. I will leave the link of that video in the description. So I'm using dbware to access the database. In my previous video, I've used SQL developer to access the local database. In this video, I'm using dbware. So I've created a connection to my local database in the dbware and then if I expand this connection, I can see all the schemas and inside the test one schema, if I expand the tables, you can see the students table, which you have demonstrated in our previous example. So this is the students table and it has columns, ID, student name, date of birth and student ID. ID is an auto incrementing column. So our aim is to generate a data frame from that Excel file and insert the data frame into this database. So we have covered the input and output for this program. The output for the program is the database table present in my local database. And the input is this Excel file present in my folder. All right, now we have the input and output setup. So I'll just take a blank folder, keep the Excel file in the blank folder and open this blank folder in Visual Studio Code. Now in Visual Studio Code, I'll just create a new file. I'll just name it index.py. So before writing the data insertion example, I just want to demonstrate how can you convert a database into a list of tuples. So let's cover that first. I'm going to use the Jupyter cells feature of Visual Studio Code so that I can see the variables while I'm running the code. First, I'll write import pandas as pd so that I can create a data frame out of the Excel file. And then I will import the Excel file as a data frame. So I'll just write data df equal to pd dot read excel and here i'm going to give the file name or file path of the excel since the excel is in the same folder i can just write the excel file name all right so now i've read the excel as a data frame called data df variable so now let's run this cell and see how this variable looks like so let's run this cell now in this interactive output i'll just write data df and here you can see the data df is just same like the excel you have student name, date of birth and student ID. Our aim is to convert this data frame into a list of tuples. I'll just write data df dot values and shift enter. Now you can see dot values will convert the data frame into a list of lists and each list item will be a row. So now I almost got my output, but now instead of list, I need to be a tuple. So I'll just use a simple list comprehension to convert this list into a tuple. So first let me try to write a list comprehension. I'll just write x for x in data df dot values. And instead of x, I'm converting the list item into a tuple item using this tuple function. So if I just shift enter, I've got list of tuples instead of list of lists. And this is what is required to insert the data frame into the database. So now just by running this expression on the data frame, I can convert my data frame into a list of tuples. So I'll create a new variable called data insertion tuples. And I'll write the expression which you have derived just right now. And I'll run this cell again. And now let me try to see the data insertion tuples. Shift enter. And here you can see I've generated the data insertion tuples from a data frame called data df. 
So now we have the setup required to convert the data frame into data insertion tuples. Now let's go to the blog post and see the example where we insert the data insertion tuples. So this was the example. So I'll just copy paste this example as it is and paste it in my example here. If you want a detailed explanation of how this code works, I've already made a video on CX Oracle interfacing. So please check out that video to understand how this code works. But now I'm just modifying this code. And here in this code, you can see the variable called data insertion tuples. In this example, I have created a hard-coded data insertion tuples. But now we have to derive these data insertion tuples and importing the data frame is already covered here. So let me just copy this line here. I'll just copy this importing data frame and I'll just write it here. So now in my code, I'm reading an Excel file as a data frame. Let me try to grab this data insertion tuple creation statement and paste it here. So now what I'm doing here is I'm converting this data frame as data insertion tuples. So let me try to delete this upper cell now. All right. Now we have integrated the data frame into our data insertion tuples example. You can see I've first created a data frame out of an Excel file and then I have generated the data insertion tuples. And once you have the data insertion tuple, it's just the same as the previous example. But let me try to walk you through this code once again. So it's really simple. First, we create a connection object and then we create a cursor object and then we derive the data insertion tuples from our data frame. In order to resolve conflicts before insertion, what I'm doing is I'm deleting the rows which will conflict. So using a delete query and using some filters, I'm just finding out the rows which will conflict with the insertion rows and deleting them beforehand. So this is the delete query and then I'm executing the delete query here. So now I'm deleting the conflicting rows beforehand so that I won't get undesired errors. And then I'm creating the insert query and using the data insertion tuples, I'm running the query and inserting the data rows. And that's it. At the end, I'm committing the connection. And once my work is done, I'm closing the cursor and connection. That's it. So let me try to run this example. I'll just run this example now. And here you can see number of existing rows deleted equal to 2, number of inserted rows equal to 2. We got this output because there were rows already existing in the database. So I'll just remove these rows and try to run this example again. So I'll just right click, edit and delete current row. So two rows are getting deleted and commit this using this save button at the bottom. And now I've got my rows deleted. Now with an empty table, let's try to run this example again. I'll just run this example again. And here you can see number of existing rows deleted equal to zero, number of inserted rows equal to two. And let me try to refresh this database again. And here you can see the two new rows from the Excel being dumped here. So that's it guys. We have covered how to insert a data frame into an Oracle database using CX Oracle. Now let's see some caveats. In this SQL query, the order of the values in the data insertion tuples is important. In my example, fortunately, my Excel file has rows in the same order. So let me try to open the Excel file now. You can see the order of the columns is same as the SQL query in my code. But suppose, let me try to change the order now. I just Take this column and move it now. So now my data sequence is changed. And now if I run this query, obviously I'll get errors because I'm using the same sequence from my Excel file. So how do I change the order of these columns as per my requirement? So further, after reading the data frame, I can reorder the columns. So one simple way to do that is data df equal to data df of give the list of required column names. So now whatever the order of the columns might be, I'm reordering them to be in the same order, student name, date of birth and student ID. And that is the order used in my example. So this way you can even take control of the column ordering by reordering the data frame column names. And there might be other case like you might need to rename the columns or you might need to search for missing columns before inserting the data frame. That checks you need to do for yourself depending upon your input data file. And what I just did in this 10th line is manipulating a data frame. And I have a whole list of data frame skills where you can get to know how to work with Excel files and pandas data frames, how to import a pandas data frame from a DVDF file, how to rename the columns of pandas data frame, how to filter the data frame rows, how to use iLock and lock functions how to export the data frame as Excel CSV and join two data frames and convert the data frame to a list of dictionaries and so on. So I highly recommend you to check out my pandas data frame skills because these might be useful in your use case.
I will leave the link of this table of contents page also in this video description. You can see in the blog post, I have given you the source code so that you can copy paste and practice it for yourself in your own computer. So please be sure to check out this link of this blog post in the description of this video. Hope you like this video guys. Thank you for watching.